Hello and welcome to a new YouTube series on Hacking the Simpsons Cartoon Studio. My name is Donald May and this is the story of how I went about getting the Simpsons Cartoon Studio to work in ScumVM. Along the way we will dive into how this game works and the secrets that it holds. The Simpsons Cartoon Studio was released on July 1996. It was developed by Big Top Productions and was published by Fox Interactive. This was a filmmaking game that allowed you to create your very own Simpsons cartoons using characters, sounds, and music from the show. It was a lot of fun even if the cartoons it made could be pretty crude. The game uses a 16-bit binary, which means modern Windows computers can't play it directly. If you try to run it, even with the compatibility settings in Windows, you will see an error saying that the app can't run on your PC. We can't use DOSBox to run the game, because it's designed for Windows and requires 16-bit Windows binary libraries. If you want to run the game, that leaves you with two main options. You can either create a virtual machine when running Windows 95 using something like 86box, or you can use something like WineVDM, which is a 16-bit emulator for 64-bit Windows. If you want to make a Windows 95 virtual machine, I recommend using something like 86box because it does a better job of emulating the hardware used by older systems. This is a demo showing running the Simpsons Cartoon Studio on a Windows 95 x86 VM. This machine is emulating an Intel Pentium 2 overdrive at 66.67 MHz with 256 megabytes of RAM, and yes, I mean megabytes, and a 3DFX Voodoo 3 3000 graphics card. For audio, it is running a Sound Blaster AWE32. This demo shows running the Simpsons Cartoon Studio using WineVDM. Notice how when the game launches, the window cannot be resized and it is a small resolution. It is not a very playable experience. The problem with these approaches is that they require setting up a Windows 95 VM or using WineVDM as a compatibility layer with 16-bit windows. Setting up a Windows 95 VM is a really time-consuming task that involves hunting down a lot of old drivers. It took me several hours to set up x86 box Windows, uh, Windows 95 VM. WineVDM makes it pretty easy to run the game, but the actual experience itself is not very friendly because you can't resize the window, and so on large resolution monitors it just isn't very fun. Both of these approaches are not great to preserve this game for the future. Also, neither approach is truly cross-platform, and one goal of mine is to be able to play the Simpsons Cartoon Studio on my Steam Deck. So what can we do to preserve this game for the future? We could reverse engineer the 16-bit binary, but reverse engineering a binary takes a lot of time. A typical reverse engineering effort can take months to years. Alternatively, we can do some research to find out more about what the game is written in and see if there are any alternative approaches. After some Google searching and looking at the game credits, we can see that the Simpsons Cartoon Studio was developed using Macromedia Director 4, which was a multimedia author authoring program used to create a large number of CD-ROM games, interactive kiosks, and shockwave titles. The game was written in Lingo, which is a Macromedia Director scripting language. In 2008, Macromedia Director was renamed to Adobe Director. So does knowing that the game was created in Macromedia Director help us? Yes. ScumVM added support for Director games in 2016 and approved the support in 2020 and 2021. ScumVM, or Script Creation Utility for Maniac Mansion Virtual Machine, allows you to play certain games by replacing the existing game executable. ScumVM supports a variety of different game engines, and one of the engines it supports 
is a director engine. It's not an emulator because it doesn't virtualize any hardware. As a result, it allows you to play games on systems they were never designed to run on originally. Is ScumVM a good choice to preserve this game for the future? ScumVM is a cross-platform and works on Windows, Linux, Mac, and consoles such as the Steam Deck, Switch, PS3, and more. It doesn't require a virtual machine or hardware emulation. I think these qualities make it a great choice to make the Simpsons Cartoon Studio playable for years to come because it dramatically simplifies the work needed to play the game. Additionally, ScumVM has a debugger so we can even find out more about how the game works. So, we should be able to just play the Simpsons Cartoon Studio in ScumVM and it should work out of the box. Foreshadowing, it doesn't. But, I'm going to try to launch the game using ScumVM and after it loads you will notice a problem. The game gets stuck on the loading screen and I can't click anything. Unfortunately the game doesn't work out of the box. The game gets stuck and we can't click on anything. And does, so does that mean we are defeated? No. We are going to continue to try to figure out why this game doesn't work. Let's check the Scum VM console log. When we look at the console output, we see a line that says the MS file xlib is unimplemented. I've highlighted this line using a red box. This means that ScumVM doesn't implement one of the libraries that the game needs to run. So the logs tell us this MS file xlib is missing. We are going to come back to this issue later. For now, we are going to see what we can learn using the ScumVM debugger. If we hit Control plus Alt plus D in ScumVM, we can access the debugger. When we use the debugger, we can type the command vars to show the current variables and their values. We notice that a number of these variables are void, which means they don't have a defined value. This is likely because of the missing MS file xlib. We notice using the debugger that MS file object, simp data path, and playback mode are all void. Playback mode sounds interesting for determining if we are loading or not. We set a breakpoint, we will set a breakpoint whenever the playback mode variable is accessed to see where it is used in the code. Figuring out where what variables to look at takes trial and error and it's not always obvious where to start. What I'm showing you in this video represents many hours of debugging, troubleshooting, and problem solving. Here are some ScumVM debug commands. If you type help in the ScumVM debugger, you can get a much more complete list. The command we are interested in currently have highlighted in yellow. bpvar creates a breakpoint when a lingo variable is read or modified. The breakpoint will pause or program execution when the variable is read or written to, and this will allow us to see where in the code that particular value variable is being used. Here we use bpvar to set a breakpoint on playback mode. We then continue the game and we'll
and we see the game breaks at the start movie function. We can use the disassemble command to show the lingo bytecode of the start movie function. So we see that the playback mode is accessed in start movie. We have disassembled the start movie function and we've gotten lingo bytecode. We can turn the lingo bytecode back into more readable lingo script by using ChatGPT. ChatGPT doesn't do a perfect job, but it will be good enough for our purposes. Here I'm pasting the lingo bytecode into ChatGPT and asking ChatGPT to give me the lingo code. While well, it doesn't do a perfect job, it's close enough and it's a lot easier to read than the lingo bytecode. In the lingo script that we got from ChatGPT, we can see that the start movie function checks that the playback mode is equal to begin, and if it is set to begin, then eventually it calls go main. We can use the debugger to set the value of playback mode to begin. Also, looking at the debugger, we can see that the value of the Simpsons path variable is set to C Simpsons. If we look at the folder structure of the game, we can see that there is a Simpsons folder and a Simp Data folder. We can try to set the Simp Data path to C Simp Data to see if that's where, what the game is expecting. This is just an educated guess based off on the Simpsons path variable. So let's use the debugger to set the values of these two variables. We can use the REPL command to run Lingo commands. The command to set a lingo variable is set, followed by the variable name and equal sign and the value that we want to set the variable to. We can use lingo off to exit the REPL. Then we run the continue command to continue our game after the variables are set. Once these two variables are set, the game loads as expected. So let's just add Homer. And Oof. we'll make him say Doe. Woohoo! Or woohoo. Yep. Either way. Notice how everything says OK there. So we'll go ahead and save our creation here. And when we do, the game freezes. We run into an error because the update status bar handler is not found. So we still have problems. Unfortunately, even after manually setting these variables, we still have problems, and setting these variables by hand is annoying and error-prone. When we tried to save the cartoon, we got an error about a call to an undefined update status bar handler. To fix these issues, we are going to have to modify the ScumVM source code.
In future videos, we're going to look at implementing the missing MS file xlib and work on fixing other ScumVM issues such as the update status bar handler. I've actually already done this work and have submitted a pull request to the ScumVM GitHub repository that will be linked in this video description. We'll also look at using a program called Project Arrays to open the Simpsons Cartoon Studio Director files in Macromedia Director 4. Also, I would like to look into how to modify the game to enhance its functionality. One idea I have for enhancement is to increase the number of possible characters you can have when making a cartoon. Making this video took a lot of work and I'm a small channel. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and liking this video because it will help m motivate me to make more content. In the next video, we're going to dive into ScumVM source code, implement the MS file xlib, and more. Thank you for watching and I hope that you have learned something new.